Motor City as Hawkeye fans are fired up for a little border battle with the Huskers here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. BTN Basketball is here to witness Nebraska and Iowa, the second meeting between the two teams. The first went to double overtime earlier this year in Lincoln. And a look at the Big Ten standings, that huge mess in the middle. Nebraska and Iowa each jockeying for position. We're a month away from the Big Ten tournament. You gotta start thinking about where you're gonna be seated when we all head to Washington, D.C. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Sean Morris, I'm Kevin Kugler. Nebraska and Iowa round two. The first round was a spectacular double overtime win for Nebraska, but since then, both teams have had to deal with some injuries. Nebraska having to deal with an injury are on the front line. Young players stepping up there. It's been the backcourt which has answered the bell over the last couple of ball games for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And for Iowa, without Peter Jock the last couple of games, he's been back, but it has been those youngsters in the backcourt that have shined. Jordy Bohannon has really shot the ball well, and he, along with Brady Ellenson, have done an outstanding job of taking care of the basketball, Kevin. Combining for nine assists, no turnovers last time out versus the Scarlet Knights. But Kevin, it's been their three-point shooting, especially that of Jordan Bohannon, which has been very impressive. In their most recent win on the road in Piscataway, five of seven from deep. Jordan Bohannon really shooting the ball well over the last couple of ball games, looking for his shot. And he, along with Brady Ellingson, stretching out defense. And Ellingson shooting 55% from behind the arc, leading the conference in that category. There's no question that Nebraska has missed Ed Morrow. He's out again today with that stretch reaction in his foot, but we've seen some growth from that young front line. Jordy Shimanga has been fantastic over the last week. He really started to play well against Purdue. And Kevin, you can see his confidence continuing to rise, most recently versus Michigan State. He was asking for the basketball, establishing position on his way to a career high. It was in the losing effort, but this is going to pay dividends for Nebraska down the road because he's running the floor, he's establishing position. When the ball goes on the backboard, he, along with Michael Jacobson, very formidable on that right. Jacobson leads the conference in offensive rebounds. That young front line of Jordy Shimanga and Michael Jacobson for the Huskers will be tested today against the Iowa Hawkeyes. The backcourt of Bohannon and Ellingson providing the spark from the outside. And oh yes, the Big Ten's leading scorer, he's back today. Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. This crowd fired up for Nebraska and Iowa. Kevin Kugler alongside Sean Morris. Great to have you with us today for Carver Hawkeye as we get this Conference clash started between the Huskers and the Hawkeyes. No Glenn Watson in the starting lineup for Nebraska. We watched him warm up. He's got a groin injury. He is not in the starting lineup. He's still on the bench. He's in uniform. We'll see if he plays today, but obviously a huge loss for Nebraska. Especially when you consider, Kevin, the first meeting between these two teams, Watson with third points. There's Tyler Cook, Peter Jock back on the floor. Beautiful backdoor cut and Isaiah Moss with a two. Nice execution in the half court. They got Nebraska working side to side defensively. Defender gets caught sleeping. You dive to the rim. Evan Taylor now to Jacobson. Taylor averaging almost five points per game. Here's Chimanga coming off his best game as a Husker. 15 points, nine rebounds against Michigan State, but a turnover. And we welcome those of you just joining us on BTN. Nebraska and Iowa just underway. You've only missed a two-pointer by Isaiah Moss. Peter Jock back in the starting lineup for Iowa. No Glenn Watson for Nebraska with the groin injury. May play, but is not starting. McVay getting the nod today as the Huskers go to work inside. And Chimanga with traffic down low is fouled, and he'll go to the line. Our Buffalo Wild Wings on the floor. We mentioned no Glenn Watson on the floor. That's 34 points off the floor from the first meeting between these two teams. But Peter Jock back out there for Iowa. Well, Peter Jock, the conference's leading scorer. That's a nice addition, certainly, for the Iowa Hawkeyes. But when you lose Watson, it's not just on the offensive end of the floor, Kevin. You also lose a guy who averages two steals per ball game, second in the conference in that category. Now, we watched him warm up. And he was out there, went through the full complement of warm-ups, but was wincing noticeably as he would go through the layup line. People always say it's a minor groin injury when it's not their groin. <laughs> exactly. Jock with Webster on him in a 2-2 game. Webster got a hand on it, knocked it away. Chimanga the pass ahead to Ty Webster. A little bit ugly, but it results in two. Starts with good active hands with Ty Webster, the senior, and the freshman Chimanga. The first outlet pass not successful, but he stuck with it. 
Buckeyes have won two in a row without Peter Jock looking for their first three-game conference winning streak of the year here today. They get Jock back. As they go to work with Moss, back to Cook, leaning inside against Chamanga, got it to go. Boy, really difficult shot by Cook because they were weaving the ball from side to side, and that's a good delivery through traffic by Cook. Entry pass, Chamanga, one-on-one -on -one against Cook. The hook shot is good, and this youngster oh. is growing up right before our eyes. The confidence level with which he is playing right now just continues to impress. He's a far different player even since the beginning of the conference season. Working inside against Wagner, and that's going to be a whistle. Tim Miles wanted to travel. Instead, it's going to be a foul on Jordy Chimunga, and The head coach of the Huskers a little hot early. Chimunga with his first. And Iowa will inbound. Bohannon has to get into Cook. We'll go to work against Jacobson. Nice job by Jacobson, walling up, and a better job by Cook of turning away from pressure. You saw that Jacobson was trying to take away that left hand, and Cook with the reversal going to the right. It's been the inside game early for both teams here. Shamanga with four, Cook with four for the Hawkeyes. Here's McVeigh off the screen, the three. A little bit strong, both handed with the rebound. We could go. Big game for McVay with 21 points in that winning effort versus Purdue. Cook will put it on the deck. Back out now to Bohannon. Cook now to work against Jacobson with eight on the shot clock. Double team comes. Ball knocked out to Jock who will have the open three. And the rebound tipped out of Chimanga's hands and into the hands of Cook. And that's an area that Nebraska usually dominates offensive rebounding, but Iowa gives them a little bit of their own medicine here. Can they cash in on the second opportunity? Ahmad Wagner not able to get that one to go, and Chimanga the rebound. Wagner was worried about Chimanga rather than converting the basket. Webster driving to the rim, left it short. There's Chimanga there for the rebound and the putback. Kevin, if he's a stock, I'm buying because the upside there is phenomenal. We have just continued to see him improve. He's far more communicative on the floor. I mean, everything about him just reeks of confidence right now. Six points, two rebounds for Shimanga early on. And Webster got a hand on that one. But Iowa holds on to the possession. 12 to shoot. Cook backing down against Jacobson. Good defense by Jacobson. Tough shot by Cook and the rebound for Jacobson. Good defense by Jacobson, but also a good job by McVay of doubling down that forced Cook to pull up the dribble. And Jacobson kind of limping over into the right corner. Webster knifing to the rim. He gets it to fall. Ty Webster going to look to have a big game without Glenn Watson. And a whistle and a timeout on the floor as this play comes to a stop with the Huskers leading it by four early on the road. Basketball on BTN is brought to you in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Kevin Kugler alongside Sean Morris as we welcome you back to Carver Hawkeye Arena. A 10-6 lead for Nebraska and Peter Jock back after missing the last couple of games. Well, the last couple of ball games before he set out versus Rutgers and Ohio State, he really had struggled shooting the basketball. When you have a back injury, you then tend to play straight up. And when you do that, it makes it far easier for defenders to get into you. You become far more limited. But that young backcourt of Ellingson and Bohannon really answered the call when Jock had to go to the bench. Bear and Pemsel on the floor for Iowa as that shot no good. And Glenn Watson on the floor for Nebraska along with Jariah Horn and Isaiah Roby. And Peter Jock, those last three games, he was not the Peter Jock that we saw for most of the early season. Those stats aside, he still leads the conference in scoring as well as free throw percentage at 92%. 0 for 1 in the early going today as Pencil goes to work against Jacobson with a left hand and the rebound ripped down by Jariah Horn. And Jacobson was kind of favoring his ankle as we went to break. He'll work inside. The double team comes. Gets some help from Horn against Jock. Oh, he walked. Well, he got away with one there. The officials in the crowd saw it, but the three on the court did not make the call. Well, the ball's taken away. What a play by Isaiah Moss and a foul on Jariah Horn. What a nice job defensively by Isaiah Moss. He was 
attached. That whole possession to Ty Webster denying him the basketball and a good job of opening up and having that hand ready for the deflection. Excellent job by Moss. Now they've got to find some offense. They've missed their last five shots and haven't hit a bucket in over three minutes. Well, they started the ball game with a little dribble drive and then the back door cut, and Nebraska has answered the call defensively thus far since that opening salvo. Here's Bear, and that's going to be a travel. And again, active hands by Webster. We saw him deflect and then get rewarded with a layup from Shimonga earlier in this ball game. Here, the dig down leads to the turnover. Good job by the senior Webster. Lynn Watson not starting today, but coming off the bench, he's been battling a groin injury. See how effective he can be with that quick groin today. And especially on the defensive end of the floor. Let's see if Iowa tries to isolate him and maybe get something going. Make him move laterally on a technique. Nice job by Roby there. Is there Roby with the left hand getting to the rim. And he's got his first two. Here's Pencil inside. The kick into the corner. And an open three. Yeah, that can't happen. If you're in Nebraska, you cannot leave Bo Hannon to go help. That's just a breakdown defensively right there by Washington trying to help out his teammate. Here's Roby back to work again against Bear. Now Webster. And the baseline goes to work against Bohan. A green dish and a finish by Horn. How about the body control by West? It looked like he might draw a charge and then the dive to the rim by Horn. But what a play to create an opportunity by West. Huskers by five in the early going. Bear will launch from deep. One and done for the Hawkeyes. Watson looking to push. Ahead to Roby. Roby wriggling down the baseline, but the reverse won't go. I tell you what, he got away with a chicken wing there. Bohannon trying to find some room now against Watson. Ball poached free. Bohannon in some trouble. A tie-up is called, and the possession arrow sends it back to the Nebraska Cornhusker. The active hands by Nebraska on the defensive end of the floor has really been the story. And then on the offensive end of the floor, Jariah Horn, he sees the double team coming down on Webster, who utilizes outstanding body control. That is just an unbelievably athletic play because Pencil did a good job of rotating over. Horn senses that dives to the rim. Our Motel 6-6 six, man, Jariah Horn. Look what he did against Iowa in that double overtime game in Lincoln a few weeks ago. 12 points, three rebounds. Huskers would love to see that kind of production from Horn again in this one, who was huge a couple of games ago in the win over Purdue at 16 off the bench in that one. And Iowa trying to stem the tide, showing a little bit of his own defense here on this possession. And we've got a whistle away from the ball. And that one's going to go inside against Pencil. Yeah, if you're going to battle with Chamonga down there, you have to play from the hips down. You can't afford to get into hand-to-hand -hand combat because one, it's going to draw the attention of the official, and two, you're going to lose that battle. Husker shooting six of nine to start, and now a foul away from the ball against yep. Nebraska and against Chamonga. That's his second. And if you're Chamonga, that's just inexperienced because you know that the attention is being drawn down there by the officials on the post. They got Pemsel the first time because of the hand-to-hand -hand combat. There, Chamonga clears out. Six points and two rebounds, but Chamonga with two fouls now as Christian Williams will work it up for Iowa. Here's Ellingson. Good job. Good help by Chamonga there. Bear, the skip to Pencil, now the handoff to Moss. Nice Back switch. to Pencil, down the baseline, and a foul's going to be called, and that's oh. three on Chimonga. I really like that execution by Iowa. They reversed the basketball, then they found an isolation on the right side of the floor that they like. And watch the dive here. Chimonga just not able to recover. You've got to help and then recover. And if you're going to give the contact, which there wasn't a lot, but there was just enough to draw the attention, make sure that Pencil can't go into the shooting motion. But that is a big foul for Nebraska. Oh, he's been so effective early on. But three fouls almost certainly done yeah. for the remainder of the half. 12-33 remaining in this first half. And Chimonga sits down. And Jacobson, his replacement, Kevin, he's still running kind of gingerly, even checking into the ball game. He turned his ankle in about the first three or four minutes. I don't think he's completely recovered yet. Puts a lot of pressure on Isaiah Roby to play well oh. inside that. Not a lot of depth in that front court with Ed Morrow out still with the foot injury and all kinds of trouble to tie up, and the Hawkeyes get it back. Yeah, and that's just, if you're Roby, 
you committed two cardinal sins against the press. One, you killed your dribble way too early, and two, you stood straight up. That allowed the defenders to get in there, and that's going to earn him a trip to the bench. And Ty Webster will come back in, the veteran presence, to handle that. He'll learn. A ton of upside with Isaiah Rope. Oh, very athletic, but you can't kill your dribble going into a double team and then compounded by standing straight up. Dom Rule back to Ellingson. Ellingson spinning inside. In some trouble, but he found Ooh. Pencil. How, How did he do some excellent that? passing oh, down low? How did he sneak that through there? One point game. Good start to this one. The rematch of what was one of the best games in the conference this year, the double overtime thriller in Lincoln. 2-3 zone has paid dividends for Iowa the last couple of times. Horn fighting his way to the rim, and a foul's going the other way against got, Nebraska and Evan Taylor. Timeout on the floor, one-point game. Huskers with the lead. There's no way you can go to a basketball game and not eat a bowl of ice cream. I mean, it, it seems criminal not to do that, so I'm glad he's doing that. And that, and that counts as a serving of dairy. No, so it's healthy. It's huge for you. Speaking of huge, huge foul trouble on the left side of this graphic for Jordy Chamanga. He's down with three fouls. Michael Jacobson just picking up his first foul before the timeout. And Jacobson leading the conference in offensive rebounding. But you mentioned it, Kevin. That third foul on Chamanga, he's going to be on the bench for the rest of this half unless something dramatic happens for Nebraska. And the last couple of times, the Cornhuskers have not responded well to the Iowa zone. That's why McVay checks into the ball game. Hemsel inside. He scored the last four points for the Hawkeyes can't connect there and it'll go the other way McVay back out there the Huskers rotate around the perimeter to Watson Jacobson was begging for it in the post they couldn't get it to him now he'll pop out Webster in the corner with 10 to shoot Here's McVay, five on the shot clock for Jack McVay. The little drive and the floater for McVay usually lives outside the arc. He gets the two. And Iowa didn't close out under control, and McVay made them pay. But that was made possible because of the fact that with the last four or five ball games, McVay has shot the ball very well from deep. Yeah, since the Morrow injury, he's averaging 25 minutes a game. He's seen a ton of time since then, and he's taken advantage of the time. Bear knifing to the rim. Excellent move by Nicholas Bear. Started the last two games before the return of Peter Jock today. And what you saw there was the foul trouble. Jacobson didn't want to pick up the second one. He just gave way and allowed the dribble all the way to the rim. McVay will fake the three. Here's Webster. And the entry pass taken away. Quick hands by Pimsel. And the Hawkeyes will go the other way. Looking for the lead. Williams inside and an offensive foul. Nice job by McVay of getting back in transition defense. He sprints to the rim. The kick ahead. Yeah, he's set. He's outside the restricted arc. And when you dip your shoulder, as Iowa did there, it's a very easy call for the official to make. The only question was, was he outside of the restricted area, which he was. A little pressure applied by Iowa. Trying to slow the Husker attack. Here's Watson, scoreless so far. Nice job by Pimsel. He's got to get in the high post as Jacobson's trying to do there. Taylor for three. Can't get it. Offensive rebound, McVay. Here's Jacobson down low with the hook, and it goes. That was a difficult shot. He didn't have a very good angle. I thought that dribble took him behind the backboard, which it did. That was a far more difficult shot than it first appeared. Good ball game so far. 9.38 remaining first half. Pimsel back and down against Jacobson, and that's going to be a whistle and a foul. Well, offensive rebounding has been a big part of Nebraska's recent success. McVay, the offensive rebound, that dribble took him behind the backboard. I mean, you need a protractor. That's going to show my age. <laughs> right now, somebody's Googling protractor. Exactly. That is a difficult shot. That is not easy. Good conversion by Jacobson. The foul on Watson a moment ago. His first. Jacobson was in the area, but he did not get the foul call. Here's Bear with an open look for three. And the delivery again from Bohannon coming off a game where he had five assists and no turnover. Jacobson back to Webster. He'll try to answer. That's short. Hemsel the rebound. Hemsel cleaning the glass. 
with his first board. Now the bounce ahead to Williams. And if you're Webster, you want to get that shot, but you want to make sure there's a post touch first. Bears score the last five Iowa points. Pencil with the swat to keep it alive. Pencil after hands again by Webster. And then a foul is going to be called on Jacobson, and that'll be number two on Jacobson. And that's a storyline to keep in mind as his teammate Chamonga is already on the bench with three. But on the offensive end of the floor for Iowa, Ellingson drawing the attention. And if you're Taylor, you come out with your hands down, it's over. You have to come out hands high. He did a good job of trying to help it on the recovery. You have to come out hands high because Ellingson coming off an outstanding ball handling game last time versus Rutgers as well. Peter Jock back out there along with Jordan Bohannon. And now Nebraska's Tim Miles has to go deep into the bench with the foul trouble with Jacobson and Chamanga. Nick Fuller on for just the ninth time this year. And because of that, let's see if Iowa is able to extend their defense at paid dividends. You don't have a whole lot of ball handlers out there on the floor right now for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. So on a make, let's see if Iowa extends the defense a little bit to try to take advantage of that. Huskers with seven fouls, Iowa with three. So the Hawkeyes shooting the rest of the way in this first half from the line on any foul. McVeigh to Webster. Webster gets Ooh. to the rim and Ty Webster, that part of his game has so grown this year, the drive to the rim. And how about the ability to come off with and catch going downhill. That was fantastic. And Don Yule, who a couple of weeks ago came in off the bench and really saved Iowa in that win versus Rutgers, delivering from deep again. This is ninth made three of the year. Guys with a one-point lead as McVeigh gets the lead right back from the elbow. That's exactly where you have to attack that 2-3 zone, Kevin. You've got to get in that high post. McVeigh found it and drilled it. Well, handing back to you. Ellingson. Deep three for Bohannon. Hemsel with the offensive board, banging his way into four and an offensive foul on Pemsel, number two and on Cordell Pemsel. And it's the same call. He dips his shoulder. He dips his shoulder. But the last time offensively, Jack McVay says, I come from a land down under, but Ty Webster says, the Kiwi will deliver on the road. Tuesday night, 17th ranked Maryland takes on Penn State, followed by 25th ranked Northwestern hosting Illinois. Big Ten basketball presented by Quicken Loans starts Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern on BTN and streaming live on BTN to go. One point game here in Iowa City between the Huskers and the Hawkeyes and Nebraska going back to work offensively after the foul on Pencil, his second a moment ago. And I expected Iowa to extend the defense on a dead ball situation. They've done just that, gonna force Nebraska to burn some time. Look at it, Kevin. 20 seconds. They have not cracked the three-point line. That press didn't lead to a turnover, but it's done its job. Fuller with the screen. Here's McVeigh in the corner trying the three, and he hits Jack McVeigh with seven early points. Picking up where he left off a week ago versus the Purdue Boilermakers. You must find him and make him put the ball on the floor. He's 16 of 36 now in Big Ten play from behind the arc, and a foul is going to be called. Hawkeyes are going to the line. That'll be on Evan Taylor for Nebraska, his first. Well, Jack McVay, his first basket was off a ball fake and then the ability to get into the lane, but this is what he's known for. Catch, release. He's quickened up that release since he got on campus in Lincoln, and boy, over the last week and a half or two weeks, he has shot the ball very well for Coach Tim Miles. Run into the one-on-one -on -one falls for Dom Ewell. One more to come. You were there for his big game when he lit up Purdue in that big win on January 29th in the game here on BTN. Yeah, he did a really good job of stretching out Purdue and very, very aggressive on the double teams on the defensive end of the floor. He also showed that a couple times here so far this afternoon. Ewell good from the line on both. Dom Ewell, a spark off the bench early for Iowa. And this is where that groin injury really hurts Nebraska. You don't have the ball handler in Watson in there to help take some of the load off Ty Webster. Watson's played, but sparingly, and was pretty ineffective when he was out there. Did not attempt the shot. McVay trying to keep it going Ooh. with the left hand. Jack McVay with nine. He's showing the whole bag of tricks. And a kick ball. Roby got a 
piece of that one. One more look at Jack McVeigh. Well, the foul trouble has been an issue for Nebraska, but Jack McVeigh has certainly answered the call on the offensive end, going to the offhand tough little floater. And McVeigh, that's the second time he's been able to get into the lane, and those opportunities are there because of knocking down three. Already above his season average, he scored the last seven points as Peter Jock is on the board. First bucket for the Big Ten's leading score. And Kevin, I'm not going to be surprised to hear shortly if Nebraska shows a little bit of zone just to give Iowa something different to think about, especially with that foul trouble. And that's going to be a turnover. No, it'll stay here. Last touch by the Hawks. Guys. So Iowa couldn't catch a break on that one. Nebraska gets it back. Fuller now. The handoff to Webster. Ten to shoot for Ty Webster. Webster inside, stumble into the rim, can't get it to go. Jock the rebound. Great crossover, just not able to maintain balance. Bohannon accelerating quickly to the rim, shot blocked. Webster will pull it out of the pile. And then a good work by Tyler Cook to get a hand on that pass as he tried to lead ahead. Well, Iowa wants to get up and down the floor. Bohannon, good adjustment, and it's McVeigh who comes in with the block. And look what hand he blocks it with. He's a right-hand dominant player, but if he tries to block that with the dominant hand being his right, he's not going to be able to get it. Nice job by McVeigh. And if he tries to go right-handed, better chance that he fouls as Fuller gets to the rim. And Nick Fuller, just his fourth point of the year. Well, he lulled Iowa to sleep right there. They were waiting for the dribble handoff. Fuller sensed that and just kept the dribble alive, goes right to the rim. Second field goal of the season. He was one for three coming in in his limited time. That makes him two for four, and let me do the math. 50%. That's wow. Yeah. How about that? Good work by you as Jock picks up the offensive foul. That is his first, and Fran McCaffrey unhappy as we look at the drive once more by Fuller. Our motorist insurance drive to the hoop. And Fuller with the motorist insurance drive to the hoop. Watch him right here. I was expecting the dribble handoff. He senses that and then is able to turn, get in the express lane, and complete. Caffrey not thrilled with that jock foul a moment ago. That's putting it mildly. Yes. Webster off the screen tries the three. That's not going to go, and it's out of bounds to the Hawkeyes off Roby. But how about the performance off the bench by McVeigh offensively and then Fuller? What a wonderful read. Iowa, you could tell they had worked on that in terms of trying to hop that dribble handoff, and Fuller threw a little wrinkle into the scouting report since that saw that Iowa was aggressively jumping that and went right to the rim. Webster had to take himself out of the game for Nebraska and they've immediately stuffed a cotton swab up his nose as Taylor swats that one into the bench. See Ty Webster being tended to. Where's Ferdy Pacheco when you need him? Yeah. Come here, Nick. Bear and Wagner back on. Ellingson and Ewell will take a seat on the bench for the moment for the Hawkeyes this has been a good game Kevin I mean and both teams have gotten after one another Bohannon trying to get around Watson yep. and a whistle on a foul they got Wagner with an illegal screen and that's one the foul is going to go on Wagner but it's on his, his teammate they have to wait for Wagner to get set before you start that cut Wagner was still on his way to set that screen he wasn't set right call by the official but it was compounded by the fact that the guy receiving the screen moved too early Watson trying to attack throws up a prayer that one not answered Bohannon with the rebound on the push ahead to Cook Cook banging his way to the rim bucket and a foul and a really nice job by Cook there, Kevin, in the open floor of not shying away from contact, but initiating. Watch what he does with the inside shoulder. Puts it right into the freshman. He knows that it's going to be an opportunity for a three-point play because he's in a shooting motion. Nice job by Cook in the open floor. That's two now on Roby. Huskers with major foul trouble right now. Chamanga with three. Jacobson and Roby each with a pair. Cannot convert on the three-point play. Taylor the rebound. And that's been an area of concern for both of the young bigs. Both Cook and Pemsel not very good from the foul line. 
So no Webster on the floor right now, and Watson battling, and that turnover gives it back to the Hawkeyes. Let's look back again. This is the foul that Fran McCaffrey did not like. They called the offensive foul on Peter Jock, and it may have been right where Ty yeah. Webster ended up getting injured on the play. Yeah, it's a tough call to have go against you if you're Jock, but he created a little bit of space, and Webster took one right in the chops. Bohannon, nice. the bounce down low. Good hands by Cook, strong hands to secure it. The ball loose. Who's going to grab it? Still bodies on oh. the floor. Fuller flips it to Watson. Guys reaching for it. Fuller goes down on the floor and digs it out. And Taylor to the rim. Rejected by Wagner. Devin, yeah. you better be wearing your big boy pants today. There's nothing easy. And the lob attempt can't pull it in. Bohannon trying to hit Cook. My goodness. Nebraska taking a breath right now on offense. And they've got Webster over at the scores table to try to get him back in. Here's McVay to Watson. He'll try the three. That one not going to go. Rebound Horn. Offensive board and a second chance for Nebraska. McVay off the glass and McVay with 11. How about the little ball fake and the eyebrow fake by McVay? It froze the help side defender. That allowed him to turn the corner. Beautiful job by McVay. Peter Jock quiet so far, just two points. The lob inside and Wagner clearing the field. Yep. The block and the foul. And that's the right call. He might have been in position, but he's well inside the restricted area. Good job of running the little pick and roll by Iowa. A chance for a three-point play when we come back. Upset Saturday yesterday, number two, number three, number five, all going down. And I don't know how many times we see this. We see it all the time right around this time of year, late January, early February, where everybody gets a little fatigued. And, well, it continues. West Virginia, Kentucky, Virginia. Just a lot of teams that are right in that lull right now. And a lot of parody in college basketball. And how about Oklahoma State? They start the conference. Big 12 play 0-6. They've won four straight. They go into Morgantown where the Mountaineers had dismantled both the Baylor Bears as well as the Kansas Jayhawks. Nice job by Brad Underwood in Stillwater. Wagner can't complete the three-point play, but Bear skying for the rebound. Our State Farm halftime report coming up. 2.52 until halftime. Send it back to the crew in Chicago. All the look around the Big Ten coming up on our State Farm halftime report. Moss, good wraparound pass to Creener just off the bench. Ryan Creener finds Wagner, the leaner by Wagner, and that's tipped in by Bear. He's knocked down a three. He's gotten a steal. He's active on the offensive glass. He's going to be in the walk-on Hall of Fame by the time it's all over. <laughs> and a travel by Horn, the turnover. Back to the Hawkeyes. And Kevin Nicholas Bear shows you why in the last two minutes that he why he leads this team in the Iowa Hawkeyes in rebound steals and blocks. He's had a rebound. He went right there as well as a steal, which stymied an offensive opportunity for Nebraska. Seven offensive rebounds now for Iowa. Nebraska missing Jacobson and Chamonga inside both down with foul trouble. And that's been a staple of what Nebraska has been able to do so far this season. They're second in the conference in offensive rebounding, but Iowa doing a really good job of being active. Some big guys on that bench right now for the Huskers. Finding Wagner again. Here's Bohannon. Good job by Watson of closing out because Bohannon will shoot it from there. Bohannon trying to turn the corner and that ball knocked out by Watson with five to shoot for the Hawkeyes. And people may say, hey, you know, Bohannon's out by the old hash mark. It is irrelevant because he will pull and make you pay. And Watson understood that and closed out under control. Time Iowa's going to take a timeout. 156 remaining in this first half. Tie game in Iowa City. Jack McVay picking up where he left off a week ago. He starts his offensive onslaught with a dribble drive. This is what he's known for. If you don't locate him, he will make you pay. Then showing the versatility and confidence going with the offhand off the dribble drive with the foul trouble that Nebraska finds themselves in. They have needed everything that McVay has given them thus far. Wagner off the long lob on the inbound. Left that one short. There's McVay battling for the board. Watson able to pull it away. Now Glenn Watson going to work with the spin, and he's fouled. 
Didn't look like the groin was bothering him at all on that run out. He's grimacing now, but I tell you what, that's a big time play because he understood. Watch him attack the inside foot in the open floor. You've got Mohan and backpedaling. You attack that inside foot. And then when Moss swings down, it makes it an easy call for the official. But you attack that inside foot, spin away from contact. First point for Watson comes at the foul line after the first foul on Isaiah Moss. And you can tell he's not feeling 100%. I mean, he's grimacing a little bit. And if I'm Iowa, I'm going to attack him. I'm going to make him move laterally and see what he can do with that injury. Yeah, he's wincing still as he backs up defensively. Bohannon right in front of him. Here's Bear. The pull up at the elbow. That's strong. But the tip by Wagner soaring in to tie it up. He's running the air. I mean, that's a big time play. He tipped it in from about four feet. Another offensive rebound, too, for the Hawkeyes. That's eight now in this first half. Here's Horn pulling the trigger on the three. Three pointer for Horn. What a first half here in Iowa City. And nice spacing allowed Horn to set up in the corner. Deep three for Bohan the answer remember when Watson closed out under control on the far side you saw what happens if you don't do that on Bohannon Horn with the travel Bear with the jump out to force the turnover for the Huskers Tim Miles will use a timeout 55.1 seconds until halftime what a half between these two Big Ten foes Close it in on halftime, and that means our State Farm Halftime Report is coming up in just a bit. Dave Repson, Stephen Bardo, Mike DeCorsi with a first half recap, plus a look around the Big Ten, and they'll look at some of the stuff we've seen from Iowa here. Really active on the offensive glass. That's usually an area in which Nebraska excels, but that's a big reason that Iowa's been able to climb back into the ball game is their willingness and ability to attack the offensive glass. Hawks last led at 21-20 midway through this first half. Here's Craner trying to give him the lead. Can't get it to go, and Fuller with the rebound. Beautiful set, though, by Iowa. Misdirection. You dribble one way, you slip the screen. Craner can knock that job. Shot down just wasn't able to do it there, but an excellent set by Iowa. About an eight-second differential between game and shot clock right now for Nebraska. You wonder when Webster's going to come get the ball. There you go. And to shoot. Webster splits two defenders. Webster splits two more. Lost it on the way up, and it'll go back to Iowa with 13.4 seconds left in this first half. So Peter Jock will come back in now for the Hawkeyes. Nobody wanted to leave yeah, the floor. I don't blame him. Who'd want to sit out this game right now? Now, if you're Nebraska with Jock checking back in, this defender, in this case, Webster, has to stay adhered to him. You cannot allow him to lose sight of him. And there's a stagger screen. Good job by Webster. Here's Jock inside. Dumps it to Creener. Creener down low. Finds Jock. The fadeaway against the Hawkeyes. The halftime lead. Kevin, they wanted to get the ball to Jock. It's a pretty good job by Webster of closing in. And it just gets knocked away. I don't think that was an intentional pass, but Iowa will take it nonetheless. And as a result, will go in to the locker room up a bucket. Greener's not given that assist that he got on that play back as Jock gives the Hawkeyes the two-point lead at halftime here in Iowa City. 38-36 after the break. Our State Farm Halftime Report with Dave Repson, Stephen Bardo, and Mike DeCourcy. That's coming up on BTN. Nebraska opened the game making six of its first ten shots, but Iowa hit its last three shots to close out the half and lead as we start the second half 38 to 36. Alongside Sean Morris, I'm Kevin Kugler. 
What an entertaining half of basketball. Both teams really competed on both ends of the floor. Foul trouble, an issue for Nebraska here, especially along the front line. And it was a couple of unusual guys that stepped in for each of their respective teams. Nicholas Bear and Jack McVay outstanding here in the first half. In fact, there are auto owners game leaders right now. When you look at the auto owners game leaders and Jack McVay averaging 7.2 points per game. He's got 11. Nicholas Bear, not only seven points, but five rebounds off the bench. He leads this team in rebounding, steals, and block shots. And all of that was on display in the first 20 minutes. Bear giving a big lift off the bench. And we were wondering what Coach Tim Miles was going to do with that foul trouble in both Chimanga and Jacobson in the starting lineup as we begin the second standing. No Glenn Watson to start this second half for Nebraska. Battling that groin injury, did not start the game. He did play in the first half, and he got 11 minutes, scoring two points. He had 34 against the Hawkeyes in the first meeting in Lincoln. Here's Webster, the drive and the dish to Taylor. Webster working against Moss now, will back it out. Jacobson, deep two. A little bit strong, and the rebound to Moss. Now the Hawkeyes in transition. Bohannon will set it up. Nebraska able to get back quickly defensively. And let's see if they try to get that fourth early on Shimonga. Taylor able to bat it away briefly from Bohannon. Boy, Nebraska's played with active hands defensively all afternoon. Here's Jock. And Jock traveled with it. Ninth Hawkeye turnover. Each team has coughed it up nine times in this one. Quiet day for Peter Jock and his return for Fran McCaffrey's squad. Four points in 13 minutes in that first half. He did have a couple of assists and many times, quite frankly, was kind of serving as a decoy to make opportunities available for others. There's Taylor looking baseline. Blocked off. Still 15 on the shot clock for the Huskers. Nice shot. Manga yeah. inside, couldn't handle the pass. He bobbled it from Webster and a turnover. A really good duck in by Chimanga, but what he did, Kevin, is he start, He played too fast. He started to make his move before he completely corralled the pass. He did a wonderful job with the duck in, just didn't complete the play. Something he'll pick up yes. more as he goes along. And I tell you, the other thing that was impressive to me, Webster didn't berate him. He understands he's a freshman. He just kind of went back down the floor. Jock driving inside, and a foul's going to be called. Jacobson coming over, may have just gotten his third, and he did. So three on Jacobson, three on Chimanga for Tim Miles' squad. Jacobson, watch him rotate down to the bottom of your screen. And what he did in real action, looked like he might have been taking verticality. He did not. You saw that right shoulder kind of come down and draw the contact. Josh so good at the line, 92% on the year as Jacobson checks out for Isaiah Roby. Guys with a four-point lead. That is their largest lead of the game. Okay. And Taylor travels with it. And Kevin, we talked about the foul trouble, but the injury to Watson also has been a big issue for Nebraska, especially when Iowa extends the defense. You lose that primary ball handler, and it puts more pressure on Webster, and Iowa did a good job of not letting Webster bring the ball up the floor. Hawkeyes on a 7-0 run, dating back to the end of the first half. Jock trying to add to it. The three won't go, but there's Cook with the offensive rebound and a foul on Roby. Third on Roby. Pretty good shot by Jock, but Roby just, he just flat out got beat to the basketball. He's fortunate it's not a chance for an and one for Iowa. Nine offensive rebounds now for the Hawkeyes. One more for Cook, his first make in two attempts at the line. And this is really important for Nebraska here. Remember earlier in the first half, Kevin, they didn't block out on a foul shot situation, and Iowa got an extra possession as a result. Cook at 61% on the year from the line. And you mentioned it, the ball batted into the backcourt of break for Nebraska as Taylor will motor to the other end. Taylor is fouled, he'll go to the line. You could see Tyler Cook measuring his steps the whole way. Nebraska very fortunate to track this down. And Tyler Cook, you could see him right there. He's measuring his step. There's no question that he is going to contest that aggressively, and he does, sending Taylor to the line. 
Evan Taylor rolls at home. You remember back to that first meeting in Lincoln, Evan Taylor really struggled at the line, was 0 for 5 against the Hawkeyes at the foul line in that one. It's both of them here, and Nebraska draws within three. And boy, was Nebraska fortunate that they were able to corral that missed foul shot. Ball popped free. Roby may have gotten a hand on that to knock it away from Moss. Active hands again defensively, this time by the freshman Roby, paying dividends for Nebraska. Now Taylor on the attack. Here's Webster. Chimanga working against Wagner with the left hand, and Jordy Chimanga's got a beautiful job by Chimanga. But how about the post speed from Webster? It's away from the defense. Kevin, so many times you want to throw it away from the defense rather than to your teammate. Webster showed you why there to work Cook against Chimanga playing with those three fouls. You see a little cushion Chimanga providing. Ball loose inside Wagner working against Chimanga puts it up and in. That's a tough play. That's a tough catch by Wagner and then the ability to elevate in traffic very impressive for the sophomore. Good start for the Hawkeyes in this second half. Three point lead for Iowa. A good duck in. McVay down the baseline, all the way to the rim, and McVay with 13. And a small thing, but Shimonga, when he made that hard cut to the post, then he rode his defender up the lane. That took away the help from Cook. I'm not sure we've seen a Nebraska team more aggressive on offense in a game than we've seen here today. Everybody attacking the rim. Shimonga the rebound, and now Webster on the push. Two on one if they hurt. Webster on the attack to the rim. No. Rebound Shimonga. He finds Webster for the open three. And Bohannon with the board. Good work by Bohannon defensively there. Here's Moss. He'll try. And an offensive rebound for Wagner. Can't get the put back to go. Oh, Shimonga's down there digging it out. And that's going to be a tie-up. It'll stay with Iowa. Man, I love the way both teams are just playing hard. You know, you don't want to see guys reaching over for the ball like they're trying to pick up a quarter off the street. Get down there and dig it out. How about the pass from Webster? This is a small thing, but an important thing. Look how he did. He threw it away from the defender, Wagner. That allowed Shimonga to catch and deliver. Then Shimonga, watch what he does to Cook. He rides him up the lane just enough to take away the weak side help. That allows a clear path for McVay. Really seeing some growth out of the freshman post for Nebraska. And the confidence. I mean, just the way he's carrying himself over the last two or three weeks, it's a noticeable difference. Jock had plenty of time to regather, and he left it short. He thought too much. Webster going end to end to the rim. That was out of control. Yeah. Couldn't get the shot to go. And Jock the rebound. Now on the push, Bohannon left alone for three. And how about the pass from Jock? Jock is on the right side of the floor. Excellent job of spacing by Iowa, but a good delivery from the conference's leading scorer, Jock. And Bohannon's just set the Iowa freshman single season record, 53 three-pointers. Matt Gaten's record of 2009 is now gone. He had 52. It's Bohannon, the best freshman three-point shooter in Iowa history. Webster inside Chamanga was fouled as he received the pass by Nicholas Bear. That'll be his second. Even though you're the conference's leading scorer, you can help your teams in other ways. Jock shows you right there. He knows where his shooter wants it. He delivers it, and Bohannon does the same for Iowa. Basketball on BTN is brought to you in part by Auto Owners Insurance, the no-problem people. Find your agent at autoowners.com. And in partnership with Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, push button, get mortgage. You don't want to take your eyes off the court, even for an ice cream cone with the action we've seen here. 46-42, the Hawkeyes by four. End-to-end -end action here, although in this second half, neither team able to find much in the way of shots falling two for seven for the Hawkeyes two for six for Nebraska from the floor to start the second half and Iowa on the inbound situation for a little bit of a zone and Roby attacking and fair <laughs> rejecting uh, Nicholas Bear leaves no doubt <laughs> if this were a court case this is called being dismissed with extreme prejudice only Division I player with 30 blocks, 30 steals, and 20 made threes. Fifth straight game, the Bears blocked two or more shots. He had six against the Huskers in Lincoln earlier this year. Six to shoot for McVay, and he liked the three, and he got it. How about the bounce of McVay step? I mean, he knew that was in about halfway after it left his hand. He knew it. 
Ran down the other way. One point ball game in Iowa City. Pretty super Sunday here between Nebraska and Iowa. Is that trademarked? It, uh, not yet. Okay, that's good. Cook inside oh. off the window. Well, we've talked about the job Shamong has done, but how about what Tyler Cook has done? The future is very bright for that young man in Iowa City. Very athletic. We've seen a lot from the future of this Iowa team. Bohannon, Cook, Pemsel. Ryan McCaffrey's got an awfully good freshman class building here. It's Roby. Couldn't get that one to fall on the rebound, Peter Jock. You can live with that shot. That's a good shot, one that Roby can convert. Bear working against Roby. Good defense by one of the Husker freshmen. Oh, they missed Bohannon. Bear on the spin against Roby. And there's the rebound for Chimanga, clears it away. Bohannon back cut Watson. Iowa just wasn't able to find him. Watson with the pull up. That's not going to go. Chimanga trying to get the rebound, but Iowa clears it away with Brady Ellingson. They look down low, and a foul is going to be called. Roby picks up his fourth. The story offensively for Nebraska thus far has been the play of Jack McVay. He's knocked down a couple of threes. This is the most recent example of a dribble handoff in foul trouble. Kevin has been a big problem. And this one is created because of the willingness and ability of Tyler Cook to run straight to the rim and get the freshman Roby on his hip. Fourth on Roby. He leaves, as does McVay. Webster back on the floor, along with Jariah Horn for Nebraska. Jock against Webster and a bump and a foul called on Webster. His first, team's fourth in the second half. And they bump knees, and that's why you see Ty Webster kind of hopping around on the inside pivot right there. The rip through, you see them bump knees, and that insult to injury. Not only do you get the foul, but you get a little stinger right there. Great shot by our crew on that little knee-to-knee -knee contact. And Webster got the worst of that one. Bohannon's got to get it in. He does to Ellingson. Here's Cook to work against Shamanga. And he muscled it up and in. And a smart play by Iowa. How about that coming out of the set? You know Shamanga is in foul trouble. You make sure that Tyler Cook's able to step in. And Shamanga had no other option other than to let him score. Matching their largest lead of the ball game at five. And there's a foul going to be called on Cook. Had his hand on Shimonga before the pass. And Cook with his third. His third, team third. Well, both teams doing a really good job, Kevin, of understanding matchups and trying to take advantage when they have the ball offensively. Hemsel back in. Oscars, as we mentioned, with some pretty significant foul troubles. Jacobson returns with three. Chimanga sits down with three. Roby already on the bench with four. For Iowa, that foul trouble is limited to Cook. He has three. Pemsel with two, and nobody else even in the discussion. And Chimanga will probably be on the bench until at least the next media timeout, Kevin. That's my guess coming up at about the 12-minute mark. Nice help there by Ellingson to take away that post key. Taylor, the pull-up. And that one drops for Evan Taylor. He's got four. Quick ahead. Jock to the rim. Reverse no. And Jacobs to the rebound. You always watch Jock when he gets up after hitting the deck with that back injury, but he appears to be fine. Webster pulls the trigger on the three, and Jock skies for the rebound. Yeah, and I think Jock on that last offensive sequence was expecting contact, took his eye off the rim. There's Pemsel against Jacobson. Muscles his way inside, but Horn scoops up the miss. I tell you what, the official on the near side here, Tom Eads, he, he kind of came back limping. Look at him. Yep, Eads is, Tom yeah. Eads is limping right now after the offensive foul called on the other side, Brian Dorsey. And he's calling for a little bit of a timeout, yeah. I thought I saw him. You know, G. Steratore on the far side hasn't seen it, and Tom Eads is look. he's asking for some, yeah, look at him. Yeah, that's, that's a tough break. When he ran in front of us, I thought I saw him limping. So Tom Eads going over to talk to Gene Steratore. And, and Gene Steratore just asked him why you could lip read there and say, hey, are you able to go? He's going to be checked out by the athletic training staff on the Iowa bench. Looks like he's going right to the yeah. locker room. So 
a timeout while they tend to Tom Eads. Gene Steratore and Brian Dorsey, the other two officials, and we may have a two-man crew the rest of the way if Tom Eads is unable to continue. I think we've got to look at this here, what happened with Tom Eads. See him kind of pull up as he tries to cut his steps right there. He tries to get around Webster, and he kind of chopped his steps there a little bit, and then you can see him kind of crow hopping there like a baseball player would to try to regain his momentum. And now this is going to go back to my days, Kevin. Two officials. It's the way it used to be and yeah, the way we liked it. That's right. <laughs> We played by candlelight. <laughs> if we could just get a few people to pull their cars in yeah. here and shine headlights on the court, we'll be in good shape. So 50 to 47, Iowa with a three point lead and the ball. And it is a two man crew right now. I'm sure Hawkeye fans will be more than happy to help out with any assistance needed from the stands. Jacobson with a steal. Nice footwork by Jacobson. Watson on the attack, driving to the other end. And Watson, when he's needed the explosiveness, he's been able to find it today, but in limited bursts. And it started, again, active footwork by Jacobson. You can see Iowa tried to get the seal. He's able to step around, and that leads to the breakout opportunity for Nebraska and Watson. Brand McCaffrey arguing that this should not be a shooting foul. He said Watson was passing. Instead, it will be two free throws, and he misses the first. Watson just two points today after that 34-point performance on January 5th. Last five games, the numbers have been down a little bit for Glenn Watson. Just 12 points, two and a half assists per game over the last five as he hits the second to make it a two-point game. And now Bohannon back to work for the Hawkeyes. Nice job by Horn of coming out hands high on Bear. Ellingson around the screen for three. That was not an easy shot for Ellingson's first make and first attempt of the game. Quick release by Ellingson, but a good job of moving without the basketball. Made that possible. He took this defender down toward the lane that came off on the little curl. Shows you why he leads the conference in made three point percentage. Boy, is he in a good groove right now, too. He's at eight of his last 11 from three. Webster, tough shot, won't go. Tip try, no, but there's Jacobson again to tip it up and in. And Kevin, it's not necessarily how high you jump, but how quickly you can recover. And a good example of that by Jacobson right there. He was able to hit the floor the first time to go right back up. And a foul underneath as Taylor was getting caught up with Ellingson down low. Evan Taylor with the personal foul. Timeout on the floor. Three-point game in Iowa City. 53-50, Iowa leading, 11-51 remaining in the second half with Sean Morris, I'm Kevin Kugler as we welcome you back inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. This weekend, college basketball is teaming up with Autism Speaks to raise awareness, understanding, and acceptance of autism, which affects one in 68 children in the U.S. Learn more by visiting autismspeaks.org slash coaches. You'll see the coaches today wearing those blue puzzle pieces in their efforts to help the awareness campaign for autism. Inbound to Tom Ewell as the Hawkeyes go back to work in the half court. Up by three. Well, Horn doing a pretty good job of battling down there with Pemphrey. And a turnover as Ellingson. No, it'll stay with the Hawkeyes. Tipped out by Nebraska. Ellingson getting it done handle of the basketball, Sean. Ten assists, no turnovers in the last three games entering today. Four assists, no turnovers today. Here's Bear. Back to Bohannon for three, and he hits it again. Bohannon four for five from behind the arc. And just enough of a misdirection dribble allowed Bohannon to get his feet set, and if you're a horn, you cannot come out with your hands down. I don't care how deep Bohannon is. McVay, can he answer? He cannot. But Jacobson, the offensive rebound and a foul. Kevin, I don't care where Jordan Bohannon catches the basketball. You cannot come out hands down. It's too late. By the time that Horn gets his hands up, this thing has almost found the bottom of the well, and Jordan Bohannon continues to impress. Watson now. 
after the 15 foul on the Hawkeyes as the Huskers set up in the half court. Nice job by Horn of making himself available. Horn to work against Pencil. Turns with a right hand, and a foul is going to be called on Cordell Pencil. And that is number three on Pencil. Kevin, in the first half, we saw Jack McVay make himself available in that high post, and it paid dividends with that elbow jump shot. Here, in what looked to be a stagnant offensive situation for Nebraska, Horn does the same thing, but rather than turn it and try to shoot a jump shot, he put his body to the rim. One more for Jariah Horn, who has six points. Ryan Preener back in for Pencil. And this is going to be interesting. You know, Preener coming into the ball game. How much the ability of Coach Fran McCaffrey to rotate some of those front court guys is going to wear into Nebraska, especially with the foul trouble in which the Cornhuskers find themselves. Preener almost able to get it to Ellingson, couldn't find him in time. Watson all over Bohannon. Ooh, Bohannon got away screen. with one. Craner with the hook. That's not going to go, and there's Horn with the rebound. How about the strong rebound? Not a lot of space in there to pull that one in. Watson with the skip to Jacobson. Now McVeigh. Nice job by Bohannon. A really battling the senior Webster. Horn settling for the long jumper. Won't go. Webster trying to save it. He does to McVeigh. Excellent effort by Nebraska. It's going to force Iowa now to play a fresh 30. And, and then there's a play. foul on Webster. That was frustration because I tell you what, we talked about it earlier in that sequence. Bohannon was really working hard to beat Webster to his spot. He did it yet again, and Webster got frustrated and got the best of him. Third on Webster. Big foul there as Webster now enters that foul trouble conversation. Still 10 minutes to play. Mule, 17th foul on Nebraska, so Iowa shoots free throws the rest of the way as well. Here's Yule, turned down the three, drives down the baseline and gets the two. And Greener did a really good job of stealing off the weak side help, much like we saw Kamonga do for Nebraska. He just did there for Iowa. That's what allowed the opportunity for Yule. Matching their largest lead, six points. Watson, the three. Can't quiet the crowd. Ewell rips the rebound down and starts it the other way. There off the skip, Bohannon steps in for another three. Strong this time and a rebound to Webster. At least Jacobson threw off his rhythm and made him put the ball on the floor. Oh, what a bounce from Webster to Jacobson, and he'll go to the line for one more. Beautiful, beautiful delivery by Webster, and then good strength. That's a play a year ago Jacobson's not going to be able to convert, but it's put the time in in terms of building his strength, and watch, that's just an unbelievable delivery, and Jacobson... The work in the offseason paying dividends as he's able to play through contact and convert. Both teams now with seven team fouls, so we'll have a free throw shooting contest down the stretch here. That favors the Iowa Hawkeyes. 68% at the, or rather favors Nebraska at 71% on the year. Iowa at 68%. And Jacobson converts on the three-point play. Now Chamonga will come back in for Jacobson as Tim Miles massages his two posts each with three fouls. And he's also having to manage the minutes of Glenn Watson because of that injury. He wants to keep him warm, but he can't play him for extended periods because he might get exposed defensively. Bohannon. The bounce in the corner to Ellingson. And the rebound for Evan Taylor. Boy, a really nice set by those two guys, just not able to convert. Yeah, you're not unhappy with that look. Oh, no, not at all. McVeigh lost his shoe. Slips to the floor. Horn. Bounces it to Chamonga. He's hurt. McVeigh is hurt as Chamonga runs to the rim. Gets his own, puts it back up and in. McVeigh scrambling with a shoe in his hand, trying to get back and put it on. <laughs> He's defending with a shoe. 7-2 Nebraska run. Iowa trying to find the guy that McVeigh is defending, which is nobody right now. Yeah, and he, 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 can't, he, he can't move. The three over McVeigh is good. Ellingson hits the three. And an official timeout to allow McVeigh 
to get his shoe back on. And he's not just mad because the shoe went off. He's mad because he wasn't able to move laterally. And well, he's sticking around long enough, Kevin. This is just about everything. Doesn't appear like he's hurt too bad. It looked like as he slipped, yeah. he may have stretched just a little awkwardly. But he's moving okay now that he's got his foot gear back on. That always helps. It would seem to. The reason they don't play in sock feet. Webster down the baseline, all the way to the rim, and Webster brings Nebraska within a pair. Nice recognition by Webster of understanding he had to assert himself offensively. It's Wagner, Ahmad Wagner all the way in, but he misses that one. He got past Jamanga, just couldn't finish. What a game we've had here today in Iowa City. This has been fun. Nice job by Jock in taking away the back cut. And a foul on Chamanga, his fourth. Seven, 12 to go, and Tim Miles post with four fouls. A long way to play here in Iowa City. ETN is brought to you in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. 61-59, Iowa. 7-12 remaining in the second half. Kevin Kugler alongside Sean Morris. There's two of us on this broadcast. There are also now just two officials on the crew. Brian Dorsey and Gene Steratore. Tom Eads suffered an Achilles injury earlier and has not returned to this one. So this game being officiated with just two officials and some foul trouble cropping up, especially for Nebraska in the middle now as Jordy Chimanga and Isaiah Roby each with four fouls. Are you surprised with 7-12 to go that Chimanga's staying on the floor for the Huskers? I, I'm not, no. And it's not necessarily because I think it's what Coach Miles wants to do. I think he feels right now, you know, get what you can out of Chimanga. And if he has to go out of the bench, then you bring back Jacobson. But right now, he's been a really solid post presence. And, you don't have a whole lot of options. Ellingson from the foul line is good again. Ellingson with eight. And the Hawkeye lead is four. But Nebraska down just four on a day where Webster and Watson have combined for just 11 points on four of 17 shooting. And Watson has been hindered by injuries in his own right. They've had to situational substitute him. And Webster launching the three. Got a good look, couldn't get it to go. And Ewell with a good box out to get the rebound. Really good box out by Ewell. Williams now on the push off the bench for Iowa. Nice look inside the cook who finishes. You not only have to come out hands high on Ellingson on a shot, but also in the passing situation. Because the hands were down, that allowed him to have the view for the delivery. Iowa back to its biggest lead, and Tim Miles says timeout in Iowa City. 6-11 to play in the second half and Ellingson finding Cook with the emphatic finish for the Hawkeyes From around the Big Ten Wisconsin all alone atop the Big Ten with their win today against Indiana I saw about a week ago people speculating oh it looked like Purdue may have dropped out of the Big Ten race well the rumors of Purdue's demise greatly exaggerated Northwestern and Maryland wins this week for Matt Painter's squad and Rutgers the happiest team in Happy Valley as they leave with a road win, their first Big Ten road victory. Caleb Swanigan yesterday with his 20th double-double. And how about the job Steve Peichel has done with the Scarlet Knights this season? They have been relentless on the offensive glass as well as defensively. Oh, pocket pick. Ellingson but McVay able to get it back. Fortunate break for the Huskers who have eight to shoot. Taylor over to McVay. Three to shoot. Taylor's got a launch with one on the shot clock, throws it up, that's no good, and Chamonga the offensive rebound. He'll attack, and a foul is gonna be called. That's dangerous for Chamonga, and I'll tell you why. Because when you have the foul situation that he finds himself in, there's a lot of traffic down here. Watch all the white jerseys, what's he corralled? I thought Chamonga might have been better served to kick it back out. But he drops that shoulder, and fortunately for the freshman from Nebraska, Cook was inside the restricted area when contact was made. Fourth foul on Cook, so the first Hawkeye in foul trouble as Chimanga misses the free throw. 
Iowa has built this six-point lead like so many teams this year have done against Nebraska from the three-point line. They're 8 of 16 today from three. Last two games, Michigan State and Purdue, Nebraska split those games, but their opponents were 25 of 41 from three in those two games. It has been a real struggle for Nebraska defending the arc. And Iowa, after the two misses by Shimonga, gets it back up six. Next to last in the conference in that category in terms of three-point percentage defense. 339 out of 347 teams in Division I. Teams shooting over 40% against the Huskers from three on the year, and a foul inside as McVay commits the foul on Christian Williams, and that'll send Williams to the line. And McVay did a pretty good job of moving laterally, Kevin, and beating Williams to the baseline, but then he bails Williams out by not maintaining verticality. His hands started up, and then as soon as you put them forward, you're going to draw the attention of the officials, even though they're an official down with only two. Super Wednesday presented by Buffalo Wild Wings returns with a great double header of hoops. First, Ohio State hosts Rutgers, followed by Iowa taking on Minnesota. Coverage starts Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on BTN and streaming live on BTN to go. Rutgers and Ohio State both coming off. Nice road victories in Minnesota getting one in their own right to snap a five-game skid as they went into Champaign and won earlier this weekend. Critical possession for the Huskers. Iowa with its biggest lead of the game. Chamonga inside, stripped out of his hands. It'll go out of bounds and stay with Nebraska. Really nice set. But look what Chamonga does. He brings the ball down. That allows the strip to come in there. If he's able to catch it and keep it in his shoulders, he might be able to convert. Huskers haven't scored in two and a half minutes. Find themselves down eight. Good job by Iowa of talking McVay through that zone defense. Jacobson with five to shoot, has to force one up, won't go. Webster's tip won't go. There's Chamonga inside. He can't get it, but Jacobson is there. How about the effort? by Nebraska. Chamonga keeps it alive, and Jacobson with his fourth offensive rebound, he leads the conference in that category. Six-point game. Iowa with the lead. Four and a half to go. Jock the three. Not You're sure if Webster didn't get a little piece of that out there as that'll go over to Nebraska. And it was compounded by the fact that Jock was also fighting his feet on that jump shot. But watch the effort. Once, twice, and then it's Jacobson who comes in yet again for a tip-in, reminiscent of the big tip-in he had a week ago versus Purdue. Well, remember at the half, it was Iowa dominating on the offensive glass. They had eight offensive rebounds to Nebraska's three. Huskers have had 11 offensive rebounds in the second half and the big second chance points advantage to Nebraska. Shimonga inside, still a lot of traffic. Webster back inside now to Jacobson who lost yep. it. Jacobson trickles it out to Webster. 10 to shoot. Here's Taylor the open three. And Jacobson, another offensive board. And a nice job by Jacobson, a fan dribbling out. That creates the opportunity. Beautiful job by Jacobson. And Taylor with the hoop and the foul. Kevin, he did that a week ago versus Purdue. He gets the offensive rebound, then he dribbles out with the fan dribble. That allows the dive to the rim. In this case, it's Taylor, and we've got a good one in Iowa City. Winning shot in the championship game. Closing in on the Big Ten Men's Basketball Tournament. We have no idea who's going to win this league, what seed anybody's going to be. As you can see, the standings in flux every single game. And this one has the chance to impact the standings for both of these teams. And Sean Morris, Nebraska, making a little late run here, trying to get back into this game. And Michael Jacobson, a big reason why. Offensive rebound, but watch what Jacobson does, Kevin. He doesn't force anything. He fan drills. Now, let's freeze it right here. When he draws two defenders, that allows an opening for Taylor to dive right to the rim. They find him, and as a result, we're going to have a chance for Nebraska to convert a three-point play. It's a small thing, but an important thing. Jacobson did it a week ago versus Purdue. Here he shows you how important it is not to panic in an offensive rebounding situation. And 13 rebounds against Iowa in the first minute. He's got seven in this one, and the three-point play is completed. And the Hawkeyes' lead is down to three. It was eight just a moment ago. 
Kevin, I may be the only guy that gets excited about a fan dribble. That was pretty good. <laughs> you should see Sean. He's oh. jumping up and down. Chanting fan dribble the entire time out. Came a little awkward. Oh, I man. I got big problems, Jerry. <laughs> Seven to shoot for Jock around the pencil oh. screen, and Jamanga comes out yep. and hits him with his fifth foul. And that's just youthful exuberance. If you're Jamanga, what you want to do, you don't need to show a strong head. You can come out a little bit softly, maybe a hand hedge. That's a play he'll learn to make. That's a tough one to have as your fifth, but you still have to be so impressed with the continued development in season of Jordy Chimanga. Boy, what a gut punch for Nebraska, yep. though. Shot clock was down to five. Yep. Jock was going away from the basket. And Chimanga with the pop-out, fouls out after another really good game. Ten points, eight rebounds, one assist. And now Jariah Horn into the game, and Nebraska loses a huge presence on the glass. And with Chimanga disqualified from this ball game, Let's see if Iowa tries to play a little bit more inside out. Maybe get a post up for Nicholas Bear or even Kempsa because right now your biggest player is Jacobson and he's in foul trouble in his own right with three. And both free throws good as expected from Peter Jock, one of the best in the country. And again, Iowa extending the defense and this is where Glenn Watson has been missed the most when Iowa has extended the defense. Horn looking inside for Jacobson. Good job by Pimsel of forcing Jacobson off the block. Webster down the baseline. Back out to Horn. An open look. But it's strong and rebound to Bohannon. And Bohannon stopping and letting Jacobson run into it with his fourth foul. That's some savvy by Bohannon of understanding. Watch him right here. He locates. Jacobson and he just stops. He stops short. And Jacobson says, That's my move. <laughs> Bohannon with two free throws to come here. Another excellent free throw shooter at 89%. Bohannon does not play like a freshman. He hasn't really all year long. Super smart, extremely tough. And I have a feeling as he grows in his Iowa career, he's going to be one of those guys that the rest of the fans of the Big Ten go, oh, I hate that guy, except if he was on my team, then I'd love that guy. And because he's been so productive early in his career, he'll be one of those guys by the time he's a senior, people will think he's been there a decade. Yep. Nice job by Jock, closing out on McVay. It's a good work defensively by yeah. Iowa. Webster trying to cross over, 10 to shoot. Webster lost it. Able to get it back. The tough fadeaway oh. is good over Bohannon. You just got to tip your cap yep. if you're Iowa on that play. Yeah, because Pimsel did a really good job of showing strong. Of course, the mishandle by Webster, but that's a tough conversion by the senior. Boy, Webster and Jock, they're going at it. That has been the theme all day between these two teams. This has been a physical battle. Last basket for the Hawks came at the 627 mark. Their last six points have come at the foul line. Jock with three to shoot. The bounce to Pencil, and that breaks the field goal drought. How about the unselfishness of Jock drawing the attention in a nice little pocket pass, which got it to the left hand of Pencil. Crowd applauding the show they've seen today. And it has been a dandy. McVeigh off the screen. Short. Way short. Bohannon catching the air ball. And the Hawks feeling this one right now. 90 seconds to play. Seven point Iowa lead. A good job by Bohannon. He understands hey, if they're going to foul somebody, make him foul me. The three for Ellingson. May have just put it away. And that was so smart by Bohannon. He kept the dribble alive, kind of baiting Taylor into fouling him. When he didn't, he delivered it to Ellingson. Webster will try to answer. Cannot bear the rebound. 
We're about to slide under a minute to go. And the Hawkeyes have pulled away late in a 10-point game. And I tell you what, you certainly cannot fault the effort of Nebraska here today. They weren't able to have full strength with Glenn Watson. That hurt him a little bit. Early foul trouble along that front line. And you have to get a lot of credit as well to Iowa of understanding time, foul situation, and taking advantage. Kevin, he may be the conference's leading scorer, but watch Peter Jock here. Look where this pass is. It's away from the defense, and it allows Pencil to catch and then get to the strong or left hand. And then Bohannon, after keeping the possession alive, Taylor doesn't give the foul. Ellingson moving without the basketball shows you why he knocks down 55% of his offerings from deep. A little confusion here. Fran McCaffrey is looking up at the scoreboard in the arena, which says it's a 75-66 game. In other words, they indicated a two on the three for Ellingson, at least on the scoreboard in the arena. We'll sort it out. That's what Fran McCaffrey yeah. is looking for as well. He's not sure if this is an eight-point game or a nine-point game. And I think they're going to go over and, and they're going to go look right now because was it a three from Ellingson? It looked on our initial look like it was, and I thought it was signaled a three by the officials. A little dribble handoff, a little... Is it, yeah, that's a three. I mean, there's... There's no question that's a three. And again, it was just such a savvy play by Jordan Bohannon of keeping the possession alive because he knows he's an outstanding foul shooter. Why give it up, right? So he keeps it alive. And Gene Steratore says, hey, I'm working for three right now. These guys, how about the adjustments the officials have had to make? You know, you lose Tom Eads and... You know, it looked like he uh, might have tweaked his Achilles there a little bit, the way he was limping, but the way that these two guys have to kind of adjust on the fly, pretty impressive, Espe especially with the physical nature of the game. you got two veteran officials in Gene Sterator and Brian Dorsey who've done this a long time, and the communication between those two guys has to be really good when there's only two on the floor, and it has been. Yeah, and they go to different barbers, certainly. <laughs> Coming up next, women's gymnastics. Maryland hosting Michigan. Coverage starts after our game on BTN. Streaming live on BTN to go. Webster good on both free throws. We now know it is an eight-point game with 38.5 seconds to go. Tim Miles now requesting something from the scorer's table as well. And what you're going to get here, if he has the opportunity, is a situational substitution. If they do get the ball back or get a stop defensively, you bring in Taylor. You don't want to have to force Jacobson to give a foul because you want to make sure, relatively speaking, you have a better offensive player on the floor if the opportunity should arrive. Iowa 9 of 19 from 3 today, 13 of 17 at the line. And Jock able to break away and Fuller there to commit the foul. And that's not the guy Nebraska wanted to send to the line. Peter Jock, who has just eight points today, but he's four for four at the charity strike. Peter Jock to the line, he'll shoot two. Two-time Big Ten player of the week this year. Quicken Loans' amazing performance today came from Tyler Cook. 13 points, three rebounds, working inside, and he got him off to a good start in this game. Ran the floor well, battled Chimonga down there on the post. McVay's three, an air ball, and it's tipped out of bounds by Iowa. They'll stay with Nebraska. Yeah, that thing... Not only was it short, but it came off of McVeigh's hand very awkwardly, almost a screwball motion. But McVeigh, especially in the first half, really a story offensively for Nebraska. 16 points today for McVeigh, the inbound to Webster. Webster driving inside the scoop is there. Iowa going to let that one go. And Nebraska with the timeout. We'll step aside as well. 24.8 seconds remaining in this one. Eight point lead for the Hawks. Last bucket by Ty Webster, moved him into the 1,000-point club at Nebraska. 28 Husker to get over 1,000 points. Tim Miles would like about eight more points if he could in the next 24.8 seconds. Trying to bring his team back to the hill very steep here in Iowa City for the Huskers. 
Bohannon, and a whistle and a kick. Iowa will inbound again. Now what that does, it's a small thing, but it could be an important thing, is that now it's a spot thrower. So Jock can't run the baseline. We saw them execute that after a made basket, but right now if you're Nebraska, you're going to try to funnel to the corner, and they put a larger player, Roby, to try to execute just that. And they funnel Bohannon to the corner, and that's a foul. So Bohannon fouled immediately by Evan Taylor, and that'll send Bohannon, perfect two for two today, to the line. He's got 14 points, five rebounds, couple of assists. Brand McCaffrey's youngsters getting the job done again, and they're looking for their first three-game conference winning streak of the year. Playing some good basketball in the last week. Women's gymnastics is straight ahead, Maryland and Michigan. Coverage starts after our game on BTN, streaming live on BTN to go. Tough day for that young man, Glenn Watson. Hampered by that groin injury, just 18 minutes, only three minutes, 0 for 4 from the floor. After 34 in the first meeting, Webster inside. Get it to go, Jock with the rebound, and Jock battling against Ty Webster, and there's a foul. And yeah, that's just frustration on Webster's part. You know, he missed the layup. This game is essentially over. You can see the frustration kick in right there by Webster. All right now he's got, he fouled him twice, three times. I'm not so sure he wasn't as frustrated with the call as he was the fact that he thought he fouled him two fouls yeah. ago. But at this point, it would appear to be academic as Peter Jock will go to the line for two more. For the Huskers, who started 3-0 in conference play, about to lose now seven of their last eight. And the loss of Ed Morrow is so yeah. significant for Nebraska. And with Maryland losing at home yesterday, remember, it was Nebraska who gave them their other conference loss in College Park, coming back from down 13. Horn with a three. That's not going to go. It'll go over the backboard. Iowa will inbound with four seconds left, but this one is over. And the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to pick up their sixth conference win of the year. Good win for Iowa in a battle with Nebraska. But the Hawkeyes grab this one on their home floor, 81-70. Iowa victorious over Nebraska here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Four Hawkeyes in double figures, nine of 19 from three for Iowa today. And the return of Peter Jock, a successful one for Iowa. He ends with 12. Bohannon leading the way with 15 for Fran McCaffrey's squad. That'll do it from Iowa City, our final score. Hawkeyes win at 81 to 70. For Sean Morris and our entire BTN crew, I'm Kevin Kugler saying so long from Iowa City. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network. Coming up next on BTN, it's women's gymnastics as Michigan takes on Maryland. So long from Iowa.